Welcome to the Leo Solar Festival webinar, focusing on a theme of spiritual leadership. And our guest today, uh, Lorraine Flower from the United Kingdom. Uh, hello, Lorraine. Hi, Alexander. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, focusing our group uh, on this important topic of collective responsibility of the world disciples on the leadership for the world. And so I'm inviting you just to take the microphone and share your thoughts. So I'll make you a presenter that you could share your screen. Thank you. Okay, so is that now visible? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Well, good evening, everybody, or good morning, good afternoon. Um, I feel very humbled to be invited to speak on this subject or to offer some thoughts on the subject. I've been working in cooperation with um, many energies to feel my way through what I'm going to offer you uh, in this webinar. Um, it builds on the planning sessions that we had uh, back in December for the 2025 initiative, where spiritual leadership uh, was very much a key theme. And it seemed to be the energy that was, was present at that time was acknowledging the call uh, that is sounding right now for all servers to show up. And to show up in the world of forms to transform it so that we can help humanity continue to make the ascent to the fifth kingdom. In those discussions that we had as part of that planning meeting, it was clear that each person, each server, each aspirant, each member of the new group of world servers was being called upon to define even small projects that would help to manifest the new order. The examples we covered at the time included sacred economics, supporting young people, getting behind UN sustainable goals. So from the macro to the micro, we felt that there was room for people who have developed some level of consciousness and accessed their, their soul guidance to play a more fundamental part in the evolution of humanity on the form level. So this evening, um, we're going to take a slightly deeper look at spiritual leadership and what it looks like at this time for humanity and for the earth. And um, we're going to consider that through the lens of spiritual leadership as an individual and as a group. Four themes or four aspects came to me when I was um, preparing for this talk and uh, each of these areas will hopefully shed a little bit of light on what we might think of today in our service as spiritual leaders. It seems important to consider again the transition that we find ourselves in at this time, the impacts of the outgoing sixth ray energy and the incoming seventh ray energy. And, and what does this mean for us as leaders and thinking about our leadership approach? To translate that into the role and the task of the new group of world servers as leaders today, again, what are we being called upon to bring into the plan? Of course, we're in the full moon of Leo and that is both a support and a challenge to us as we harness that energy and find ourselves perhaps open to a more accessible link to Sirius at this time. And also to consider the Aquarian age and the link between and the bridge between individual leadership and group leadership. It 
in the spirit of Leo, I felt it was important to share a little bit of the me, but only as an example of the cycle, the eternal energy that underpins leadership and to recognize that it is not a fixed thing. It's not a once and for all thing. But that said, there are some qualities and some aspects to leadership that travel through time. So we're all very familiar with the eternal nature of evolution and how step by step we expand and lift our consciousness. My journey with leadership has followed a similar cycle, starting nearly 40 years ago in the very traditional corporate world of hero leadership, where accountability and responsibility brought rewards at a more personality level, a world that still dominates in organizations today, uh, sadly. But as I travel that eternal energetic cycle, I find myself today much more attuned with a personal sense of leadership that has a lot more to do with service, humility, inspiration, a growth of the self and others, and access through a commitment to greater good and inner power. For me, leadership is a privilege. It goes beyond the positional and the role that we might hold in a particular organization or group. And it's a privilege where we get to be trusted to influence, inspire, and support others. And for me, this is a responsibility that I feel very strongly This Kadinsky painting might describe or encapsulate um, an apt expression of our world today. A world where for many confusion, distress and lack of security reign. A world where it can be hard to see the light that will uplift and transform. As servers, and I'm sure all of the people on this webinar today, we are hopefully blessed with a deeper insight, an ability to perceive beyond the confusion and see the plan unfolding. And yet, as we know, human free will can prevent the plan from being realized. And the cooperation of the new group of world servers is a vital component in supporting the unfoldment of the plan. So as we consider the outgoing energy of the sixth ray and the incoming of the seventh ray, it can be hard to remember that in fact the sixth ray started to withdraw back in 1625 with the seventh ray starting to make its way in to the earth from 1675. By 2025, 400 years will have passed since the start of the abstraction of the sixth ray. It is becoming more urgent and more pressing for us to really understand and work with the seventh ray energies. Anchoring the seventh ray is increasingly pressing as we contemplate the potential that lies ahead. Potential to help as accelerators of humanity's uh, evolution. As humanity steps up, not only to take the first initiation, but to do so with the least amount of pain and suffering. In times of change or transition, we're confronted with the new. New concepts, new ideas, new technologies. And for sure, humanity has a great need of the new. 
not more of the form that we've managed to create in the dense material world. Not this type of solution, but new ways of perceiving the world. And from that, new ways of being focused on love, cooperation, and a deep connection with the greater good. As we see from the quote, it is critical that we take this new step and we continue to help human consciousness to unfold in the way that will enable humanity to fulfill its destiny in the best possible way. I felt it might be helpful to share a little bit of the comparison between the sixth and the seventh ray. Because again, it sheds some light on the challenges that lie ahead for us as leaders, as spiritual leaders. The sixth ray, of course, has been incredibly powerful in connecting us with the sense of something more, with a vision of a higher ideal, a journey of belief, faith, devotion and understanding of something that is way beyond us as mere mortal human beings. The sixth ray has strengthened groups, but in a more separative way, helping to build strong identities and foundations, not dissimilar to the lower form I of Leo. It's helped us to understand sacrifice, especially on the physical plane, as we sought to get behind and understand the values, principles, and faiths that we connected with, zealously defending them and seeking to protect the essence of that vision. The seventh ray seeks a higher level of consciousness from us an ability to bring the foundational work of our relationship with matter and blend it with spirit, bringing us closer to our true nature of being white magicians. And to cooperate, to focus group consciousness and service, to move beyond the little self. The seventh ray asks us to bring together the pairs of opposites, to demonstrate that spirit and matter are not antagonistic to each other, that throughout the world there is only spiritual substance that is working on and producing outer tangible forms. We're being called upon to harness our power to organize, integrate, and synthesize. And to redefine sacrifice in the context of group service, as opposed to physical or national boundaries. So I want to bring Kadinsky back in again And hopefully this will speak to you as it speaks to me in a much more seventh ray form. That's certainly my perception of this image. The harmony of the earth within the universe within which it sits. The strength of the form, yet the subtlety and power of spirit infusing everything, creating ceremonial order and conveying a sense of magic that celebrates beauty, diversity, and the infinite. As leaders helping to usher in this new epoch, our leadership has to also undergo a, a shift. We're being required to embrace a newness that has less devotional quality 
and become more of the practical magician, blending spirit and matter. So what does leadership in the new era look like? When we think about it from a perhaps more practical level, it struck me that there are really four key areas that seem to encapsulate this leadership in the new era. I'm sure you'll think of many others. For me, what stood out was the issue of choice. At this time, servers are being called upon to express a fundamental act of leadership, which is to make a choice to be a leader and to choose to serve from that place of leadership. Everyone on this webinar is without doubt a seasoned server. And yet intentionality, choice, and active expression of the will to lead to step out, to be heard, to share our knowing far and wide is very different to a more inner devotional journey. That too is powerful and has laid strong foundations in the development of consciousness within the new group of world service. And now the time is here to bring that to life in the world of forms at a higher level. For some, this may resonate as a call to action. For others, it may feel like a stretch out of our comfort zone. A second area that struck me when reflecting on this subject of spiritual leadership is, of course, energy, force, and substance. That alchemical, magical process that enables us as human beings to really build the link between spirit and matter. Over many lives, we have had and continue to have a relationship with energy, force, and substance. We are increasingly powerful, and that is accelerating as we are called upon to support the externalization of the hierarchy. Recognizing the impact that we have, really understanding cause and effect, and becoming intentional about those impacts is the act of leadership we're being asked to take on. Manifesting projects in the world of form that are deeply imbued with spirit and thereby transformational in nature. A third factor in spiritual leadership for me is the subject of inspiration. And I'd like to just quote uh, a short piece from um, an article that appeared in The Beacon in 2002 written by Mary Bailey, where she says that true leadership is our ability to inspire, enlighten, and stimulate others. And the key here is to, be, is to help others to be inspired by the world of ideas and meaning. Our ability to inspire others comes from our ability to serve and our willingness to serve. And as the Christ said, the greatest among you is the servant of all. To step beyond our sense of self, personal need and discomfort, and to offer ourselves in full service of the plan on behalf of humanity, this stimulates and inspires others. And continuing with that theme of ideas, it felt important also to speak about the subject of followership. In traditional leadership, of course, we experience followership as people, others, 
following the person, bringing us back to that hero style of leadership that I mentioned at the beginning. We often place heavy emphasis on a person's ability to rally others behind them as a personality. The great generals, politicians come to mind, and of course, some not so great. But all sixth ray in essence. But this is changing just not fast enough and needs to accelerate. Our role as leaders is to aid that acceleration, not through personality, of course, but through the dissemination of ideas and concepts, bringing visibility in all departments, economy, education, science, religion, and many others that will enable the vision of a new civilization to be realized. A new way of being that values the sacredness of all. And so, to the full moon, excuse me. I um, seem to have confused my papers. Excuse me one second. And so to the role that we have as, um, as leaders, where we are being called upon to enact our work differently. And this Rurik picture felt to me to be a good expression of that task. We're being called upon to start projects that may feel quite scary, that might feel quite foolish or brave. Projects a bit like Noah, which are actually offering a lifeline or a ladder to the people who perhaps are less able than us to see the bigger plan. But that calls on us to put ourselves out in the world in perhaps a way that as servers we have not historically done. To think about the projects that we can actually offer to the world that might be a story, a book. It might be that we participate in new social projects. It might be that our interest lies in the new religion. Whatever our purpose or whatever we feel called to do, we as leaders are being asked to step up and to find our way into those projects. There are many, many options open to us. What is clear, however, is that it is not an option for us to step back at this time. It is not an option for us to find some quiet space and consider only the subjective work that we do as the new group of world servers. But we are being called upon to be active. As to the form of those projects or that activism, there are so many new things emerging in the world today so many energies pouring in to humanity that are actually opening up new gateways to the plan. We're spoilt for choice as to where we step in as leaders. 
but step in we must. So whatever idea, whatever concept, whatever inkling or intuition we find ourselves with at this time, we have to go beyond the knowing that we have and really bring that knowing into form. It matters not how small that is. It's about taking action and becoming spiritual activists in our definition of leadership. So I'd like also to bring in the energies of Leo at this time. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I wanted also to share with you um, an example of a project that we had brought out um, in the work that I do as an organizational consultant. One of the things that is um, so key at this time is for us as spiritual leaders to really take hold of our courage. And a lot of the work that we do in uh, the consultancy that I'm part of is in the field of some very traditional organizations. And yet we have found a way to translate the spiritual teachings, the ageless wisdom, in a way that at times can be heard by some of those more traditional leaders, those that have started to see that there is more to their leadership role than perhaps is defined by the more traditional uh, world of, of work. The purpose that we uh, work to in our organization is that we seek to help leaders to consciously create the new era of work. We have to span quite a long continuum in that work and yet, at the core, we hold a very clear sense of the qualities that we are seeking to connect leaders that we work with uh, to. And we encapsulate that in the picture that you have in front of you now, these conscious leadership qualities. We don't offer these as the only way to understand the new world of leadership but they do give a basis for discussion. They give a basis for opening up the new insights and the new energies that are seeking to make themselves known in our particular field, which is the field of business and the field of economy. We ran a session once where we ex brought these, leaders, these qualities to um, a group of about 20 leaders uh, who happened to be in the National Health Service in the UK. And uh, interestingly, they were very open to uh, each of these, these qualities. They were very happy to explore them and examine them. But the one that they struggled with most was the quality of heart, or in fact, the use of that word heart and the use of the word love. And so we had long discussions about the quality of love and the quality of heart and how that already shows up in organizations, but how it can be extended and transformed even further. And I offer this only as an example of the sort of things that we can do as spiritual leaders if we're prepared to be vulnerable and to accept that we may or may not be understood in the work that we are doing. And so to this full moon in Leo, where we are like Hercules, facing the opportunity to slay the lion, the lion of the integrated personality, the I am that we have cultivated carefully over lifetimes, and once again, it stands before us in this moment of the full moon. And we have the opportunity to shatter that illusion of ourself, recognizing that the self-assertive individual 
is but a step to the higher Aquarian goal, the universal mind consciousness and group endeavor. Spiritual leadership, of course, demands a well-developed sense of self, a strong foundation that can be a faithful servant in service of a greater sacrifice. Group fusion and cooperative leadership are key words here. Leo brings us the courage to dare, to overcome, and to claim our rightful place in Aquarius, the home of group consciousness. Rurik's painting of the bridge is again a useful symbol for the bridge between Leo and Aquarius that is encapsulated in the keynote that we will focus on tonight. I am that, and that am I. The search for the higher ego or soul, which in the era of the incoming seventh ray and Aquarian energies, brings us to group consciousness and to leadership within the group context. And at this time, we have access to Sirius as August is the month of the dog star. And we as humans can hopefully feel greater vitalization of that Syrian substance, however small in comparison to the great Sirius, that we can feel that resonating within us as we find our courage to step forward and slay all of the lower self. And that bridge takes us also into the world of groups, of course, and leadership within groups. We all know that we are in the 2000 year epoch of Aquarius, epoch of group consciousness and group work. So what of leadership in this context? To fully play our role in group work, we have to develop the skills of cooperative leadership. And as Lucille Cedarcrantz tells us in leadership training, corporate leadership works out a network of individuals who by their response to certain functions, certain fields of activity, and knowledge and wisdom have assumed responsibility in this area. A perfect sharing of the burden of manifesting the divine plan for humanity. In cooperative leadership, it's no longer about the I or the hero leader. It's about how we cooperate as leaders within the group consciousness. And working within a group requires inspiration. Inspiration is an energy which does not allow for power struggles. It's an energy where cooperation sits at the core of the work. As we focalize energy, force and substance within a group, we can manifest consciousness as white magi magicians on a grand scale. We have the responsibility to move from a group of disciples to group discipleship, which is a big and significant difference. Within the group, there are often varying levels of integration and unfoldment. But in group discipleship, individuality has been subjugated to the group soul. A network of relationships all functioning from the place of spiritual leadership, where accountability, responsibility and greater good sit at the core but focused on group purpose. 
the group itself in this context becomes the leader. A fusion of its constituent parts and its unity. And so as the new group of world servers and as aspirants, we know we are touching, albeit fleetingly at times, into the fifth dimension. And we have a responsibility as leaders to cooperate with the incoming energies and embrace the new ways to bring the vision of the new civilization to life here on Earth. Working cooperatively in groups with fellow aspirants and with men and women of goodwill, we will manifest the required spirit-infused forms, taking our courage and offering our wisdom in whichever the way we can. This is spiritual leadership. Thank you. I think we will now open for other contributions or any questions or impressions that maybe were stimulated through the talk. Thank you very much, Lorraine. It's very deeply inspiring presentation and um, I think the topic for the entire group, for the entire community of world servers uh, is very timely as in that image of Kandinsky that you shared the, the, of the world of chaos representing the current situation in the world that's the time where actually the leadership of disciples is essential for the furthering of the entire plan and making this shift in perception of leadership as a holders of the vision and inspirers is very important for us and so um, we invite uh, our audience now to contribute their thoughts and impressions and, uh, to the collective pool of ideas before we'll go into meditation. And you can do that by raising your hand. It's a function on the control panel of on your computers. We will unmute you. Or you can write your comments in this question section of your control panel. And uh, there, uh, there is a request uh, if it would be possible to have a transcript of this uh, talk. Uh, Lorraine, if you have that. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I have a lot of notes. <laughs> Whether I would call it a transcript or not, I'm not so sure, but I'm sure something can be sorted, yes. And uh, this uh, presentation and the entire webinar is being recorded and it will be posted to uh, our website in, in a couple of days. It's 2025initiative.org. Uh, so you could listen it again and have your own notes as well. <laughs> I was very in uh, touch with the theme of cooperative leadership that uh, Lorraine you uh, brought up in your presentation and uh, uh, together with uh, this beautiful images it really brings this idea of the collective uh, leadership that um, the network of light workers the world servers coming together as an holders of the vision for their communities and uh, working together in unison. Uh, could you share with us your thoughts about how we as members of the new group of old servers can be effectively connected and effectively communicating between the groups and um, 
together hold it vision uh, of the new civilization for humanity and the civilization in chaos that we currently see. Well, I think, Alexander, from, from and this is just clearly my, my sense of it, but, but I think that um, the new group of world servers has, has done phenomenal work already um, in building the, the foundations of connection. We, we are um, deeply committed to the furtherance of the plan, whether we fully understand that or not, of course, that's, that's um, we can have many discussions about the plan. But we do know it's about bringing in a, um, a, a new civilization for humanity. We know it's about uh, claiming our, our birthright, which is our ability to um, live together in love and light and to to do that as spiritual beings having a human experience and to remember that that's that's where we're from and i think the new group of world services has, has um successfully uh, developed its connection uh, and uh, the, the many light centers around that that broad theme but i think what we're being asked to do now is to really harness that energy really activate those light centers in the day-to-day -day life of humanity um, and, and forgive me because I, I had no intention of, of upsetting anybody with this with this image but but I think at one level um, we could perhaps rightfully be um, accused of uh, sitting a little bit on on our cushions and and um, doing the, the the kind of inner work that we do, but perhaps being a little disconnected from from the world of form, and and of course we're right to be disconnected at one level because that's part of the evolutionary journey. It's part of the consciousness unfoldment, um, and yet we are here as human beings. We have incarnated in order to be here at this time and therefore the connections that we need to make with each other now uh, need to also operate in that world of form. Um, many of the, the listeners will know of uh, Charles Eisenstein, a writer um, who's been quite prolific on many fronts uh, economy is is the, the one I know him best for but he has also written on the new story and there are many groups that have have formed around this idea of the new story and how bit by bit that can be brought to life in in their own uh, world and and some some of us as leaders have global impact and some people have more local impact in the in the context of group consciousness it's all valid and equal it's at no point should we make ourselves small or less than it's all important um, and every single uh, piece of work that we can do to help translate and transmit uh, the the energies as we perceive them and to bring those into into form in the right way that helps humanity in its overall journey small or large so so I would say our connections need to continue to be obviously in the subjective arena but we also need to, and that you know we need to not lose sight of that but we also need to be expanding our efforts and as we expand because as I said earlier we are increasingly capable and powerful and and um, we are much more capable of, of doing far more than we think we are. You know, that whole um, energy force and substance formula is, is very much alive and well within the new group of world service. So we need to be intentional about how we use that in the wider world and, and find those projects and find other servers who are able to work with us without that necessarily having to be the esoteric community. Um, again, there is a risk, I think, that we, we, we feel it needs to only be working with other esotericists. Um, 
the new group of world servers is multi-dimensional and men and women of goodwill are everywhere so we should cooperate with whoever shows up really it's interesting the notion of uh, being a white magicians because if we have the vision and we try to inspire others but we not many not capable to manifest the vision then it all can disappear in vain and that's important point to to remember and work on is that it's actually the vision is needs to be manifested and the actual leader is the one who works to 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 bring it into the physical realm yeah and 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 the act of leadership is is the is the willingness to um step out and to step forward um, and be seen and be visible and be counted for me these are all aspects of leadership but not from the place of the ego of course but from the place of manifesting spirit into matter I see we have a question mark alongside Anne's name I don't know if that means that Anne wants to ask a question uh, yes, there are several comments and uh, Anne wrote, thank you for your excellent presentation, Lorraine. Your talk contained truly relevant insights that I found very inspiring and helpful. I will definitely be studying your material many more times. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Chini wrote, thank you, Lorraine, for sending us your notes. I'm most grateful for the inspiration and practical information to expand my current work on all levels. And the paintings are particularly effective. They're very evocative, I think, paintings. And there are a couple hands raised, so I will uh, unmute Heather. Hello. Hi, Hello. Heather. Hello. Lorraine, I loved your talk. I particularly love the visuals going alongside the talk and I, I've got a, a sense that to use the world of the creative arts in all its manifestation through what we now have with the world actually goes beyond speech because yes. as, as I listened to you I kept thinking how apt your images were and actually they say so much without the need for words. So that was one thing that I, I think is interesting for people to take and for you to, to talk more about. But I also am very interested in the aspect of spiritual leadership in which groups together need to actually talk and discuss to deepen their own understanding of what a spiritual life or a vision means. It's actually about getting anybody together to talk you know, and it and doesn't matter what their level is but everybody understands through discussion in a sense in this way they find out what they mean and I wonder what you thought about that so thank you very much though, for a beautiful presentation thank you Heather thank you and um, yes and thank you for, for bringing in the the point about the creative arts and and beauty um, I, I absolutely agree and if you know maybe if I'd had more courage I would have simply offered the um, the visuals as a way of, of uh, offering this session but uh, somehow that didn't occur to me but but you're right that that um, the creative arts speak huge volumes and part of our um, part of the new uh, the new era part of the new civilization is fundamentally about beauty um, as we all know and and the creative arts uh, do speak to all sorts of people in all you know every different walk of life yeah. um, and we were doing it for us <laughs> yeah and, and but, at, but at, a, at a level that that um, mm -hmm. we can't even begin to imagine some of those connections um, yeah. and as you say coupling that with with um, discussion to to uh, develop further understanding I remember many uh, many years ago I 
I uh, was holding a small group here at home when I was starting out on my um, kind of real conscious understanding of, of the, the the world of spirit and energy, and um, and I, I this small group would gather together in my home, and and I would just hold a space really where we could talk about all sorts of things although the intention was that it was a you know very much a, a kind of spiritual inquiry group and, and we covered all sorts of, of topics really but um, bit by bit the group started to have the courage to go further into um, some of the subjects that just don't form part of the everyday discussion over a cup of coffee because they they started to tap into um, obviously a level of relationship but also a level of understanding so so um, getting into relationship with other people we, we when we think about groups from an esoteric point of view of course that there's a very profound quality about the group consciousness that we're talking about but like all things in in um, our world things sit at many different levels and I guess again one of my frustrations in perhaps some of the more lofty uh, discussions that can go on around uh, what it means to be spiritual or what it means to be a leader um, is that it can feel separate from and yet and I'm not going to get the quote right but um, but I but I think it's the, the, in the Bible there is the, the saying that um, you know we don't none of us will really get into the kingdom of heaven until the last um, the last pilgrim is home so it's about anywhere and everywhere, any person that we can um, open up a conversation with or do a project with or come alongside. That could be in schools, it could be in new religion, it could be in the arts, it could be in economy. I mean, it's anywhere. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, there is another hand. Uh, I will unmute Richard. Hello, it's Rebecca on Richard's computer. Um, Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Um, I, um, yes, thank you so much. It's very inspiring. I just wanted to um, acknowledge that for us and for our group, how um, wonderful um, the connections that 2025 brings has have been for us, um, you know, speaking about connecting up with other groups and and interconnection in that way I, I just it's been just an amazing thing for us to come across 2025 and and hear about so many different people who are doing different work and uh, um, that's really starting to translate into some tangible connections now for us since the um, Gemini um, webinar where you you opened up that dialogue and um, yeah, I just wanted to thank you very much for all that you do with 2025 and I really think it is in the spirit of connection and group leadership. It's it's wonderful. So thanks. Thank you, Rebecca. In a way, the 2025 tr tries to fulfill this uh, one of the functions that no, contribute rather to say to contribute into one of the functions of the new group of all servers to become that a change place of ideas and that the shared vision could be distributed so to speak or uh, that I think the world really needs now the common framework of references and the ageless wisdom translated into the language of practical needs and service is can be that framework of references shared across the world we have some uh, uh, little time left before the meditation and so if there are any other uh, thoughts and contributions please we welcome you to share
and today is the first day of the five days uh, period of the full moon approach and so we use this time to bring collective alignment in preparation for the uh, actual full moon moment and uh, as we continue work in different circles during these five days uh, we encourage everyone to keep connect this connectivity that we establish uh, through the exchanges like this and uh, work really as one group, new group of old servers. And there is an, uh, another comment from Ashish. Uh, feels amazing to hear the session. Thanks everyone for the session. So Lorraine, I suggest we um, uh, move to meditation. So please lead us. Okay, I will, thank you. Um, my final image for, for today. So as Alexander said, let's prepare for meditation. At this time of the full moon, we can employ our creative imagination to assist the hierarchy with letting in the light to reveal. As we add our light to that of the planetary heart center, we, we can see ourselves both embracing our own leadership challenge and supporting the manifestation of the plan. So with that in mind, let us prepare to meditate. Let us connect with our heart center, radiating love across the planet. And let us now bring our attention to the Ajna center and sound the OM inwardly to harmonize each of the personality vehicles. Let us withdraw our focus along the line of light, extending toward the cave in the head. Here we visualize a small golden sun and let each one affirm themselves as a conscious soul incarnate. Extend the line of light to the top of the head and connect with the overlighting soul. And as we make our approach to the hierarchy, 
let us remember that he who faces the light and stands within its radiance is blinded to the issues of the world of men. He passes on the lighted way to the great center of absorption. But he who feels the urge to pass that way yet loves his brother on the darkened path, revolves upon the pedestal of light and turns the other way. He faces towards the dark and then the seven points of light within himself transmit the outward streaming light and lo, the face of those upon the darkened way receives that light. For them, the way is not so dark. Behind the warriors, twixt the light and the dark, blazes the light of hierarchy. We affirm the fact of group fusion and integration within the heart center of the new group of world service, mediating between hierarchy and humanity. And we sound the mantram, I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. we project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara, and towards the Christ at the heart of hierarchy. Extend the line of light towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Hold the contemplative mind open to the extraplanetary energies streaming into Shambhala and radiated through hierarchy. Using the creative imagination Endeavor to see the three planetary centers, Shambhala, Hierarchy, and Humanity, gradually coming into alignment and interplay.
Let us now pause in meditation as we contemplate the keynote for Leo. I am that. That am I. Using the creative imagination, visualize the energies of light, love, and the will to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on Earth in prepared physical plane centers.
through which the plan can manifest. Use the sixfold progression of divine love as the sequence of energy precipitation. Shambhala, hierarchy, the Christ, the new group of world servers, men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, physical centers of distribution. Let us refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram and together sound the affirmation in the center of all love I stand. From that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Let us visualize the downpouring spiritual inflow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy and streaming into humanity through the prepared channel. Consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher, the Christ. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power from the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, 
let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We invite you to join our following webinars and uh, our next webinar will be on August 22nd. It's going to be the second uh, Leo New Moon webinar. It's on the Orb of Leo and Virgo and uh, we will continue our work with the UN Sustainable Development Goals using the opportunity of the coming new moon to focus on the goal 17 partnership uh, for the goals and um, I want to invite um, volunteers from the community to focus one of the next new moon webinars for bringing collective focus to one of the 17 SDGs. And uh, the next full moon webinar will be on September 4th, uh, Burger Solar Festival webinar. And uh, we will talk about translating the language of ageless wisdom to uh, younger generations uh, with, with Anastasia Smignova from Russia, sharing experience uh, of working as a practical psychologist. And let's stay connected, working through this special time of the Leo full moon. Let's together sound the mantra Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, 
unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun hidden by a disk of golden light that we know the truth and do a whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Ooh. 